Hi, welcome to my channel Ruby Net Crochet y Tejidos. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to knit this beautiful neck warmer or cowl. It's for the set with the hat that I did last week. If you don't see in the video for the hat, I'm going to leave the link in here. It's very easy to do. I hope you guys like it and give it a try. And here is the list of material I'm going to need to make it. If you are not already a subscriber, please subscribe and click on the little bell. That way you get notification each time I unload a video. Remember, I make my videos both in Spanish and English. So if you receive a Spanish video and you want to see in English, go to the main page of my YouTube channel that you will find the English version in there. To make this neck warmer or cowl, I'm going to use the leftover yarn from the hat. I have another one of these, just in case I don't have enough. I doubt if I have enough, but I will try. It's the Lucentra Impeccable, medium 4, 100% acrylic. It used to be 127.5 grams. This is the leftover, and the color is Blue Moon. You're going to need a marker to mark the beginning and end of the round, and a stitch counter or a piece of paper to count the round. And that way you know which round you're working, that you have to keep track. I, the, I'm going to use mine. This used to be a complete plastic little round uh, counter or row counter. And the first time I used it, the top broke, the little plastic loop. And then I made this one and it's perfect. This will last forever. The netting needle are 5 millimeter, and the cable is the 14 inches. For the hat I use this 5 millimeter, but with a cable of 8 inches. These are amazing, this needle. I'm going to leave the description in the description box below where I bought them because they are the best, my favorite needles. You're going to need as well tapestry needle and scissors. Now we have to leave a tail long enough to cast on 129 stitches, 128 for the design. The extra, the uh, 129, is to close the circumference and the second round. The stitch is multiple of 16. So if you want these a little bit smaller, you can remove 16, but if you want a bigger, like a, a circular scarf, you can increase by 16-ish motifs, plus one at the end. Um, you can wrap it around in a figure eight and pass it over, and that will be perfect. But for mine, I like the cowls because here in Canada it's very cold, and a cowl is nice and close to your neck, and it keeps you warm. So for mine, I'm going to wrap in here until I have enough for those 129 stitches. And remember always to leave a little extra tail, that way you can lose that in. And it will look really nice after. If you leave a very short tail, you hardly have anything to weave and sometimes they come back out and you can see it. So. I will meet you here when I have the tail long enough for my 129 stitches. I have the length that I need for mine. So this is the tail and this is from the ball of yarn. I'm going to do my slip knot. And I'm going to start casting on my 129 stitches. Now, if you like, you can do a scarf with this beautiful stitch. The only thing that you will have to do some border stitch, for example, like four on each side. That way it's nice and straight. And remember, if you work in the in a straight a scarf, the stitch is a little bit different than the circular because in the circular we are working in the round, always in the right side. But if you work a straight, it will be working in the right and in the wrong side of your piece. I already made a video on how to do the stitch in a swatch in a straight with a straight needles. So I will leave the link in here. You will see an eye, you click on the eye and it will show you the link for that video. And you can do your scarf by following that because in there you work in the right and the wrong side of the stitch. So once I have my 129 stitches, I will meet you here. Once you have your 129 stitches and you do a knot to secure the last one, you're going to start with a one by one rib, one net one pearl, 
but we're gonna do the first round or row open and then in the second we'll close the circumference and start working in the round exactly the same as we did with the hat so we're gonna start with one net yard to the front as to pearl and you're gonna pass the pearl without working just exactly as you're supposed to work the pearl to the front strand yard to the back and net yard to the front you're gonna pass the pearl without working yard to the back net yard to the front a pearl without working Yard to the back, net, and yard to the front, a pearl without working. So you start with the net stitch and you will finish with the net stitch. Once you finish, we're going to close the circumference and you have to make sure that this is not twisted. This is very important that the work is not twisted because if it's twisted you have to undo that first or second round, okay? The one you're going to do now. So we're going to close the circumference. I'm going to pass the first stitch to the right hand needle and this one over. And then you can pull this tight, the working yarn, because that closed the gap in between the stitches. I'm going to place that one back just to place the marker. And I'm going to bring that one back because that's the first net without working, that stitch. So yarn to the front, and you're going to pull your next stitch. Yarn to the back, you're going to pass the net without working as a pearl. You see from the front strand you're going to pass it over. Yarn to the front pearl. You're pearl, purling the ones that you uh, passed without working in the row before and then now you pass the net. You're going to pearl. You have to make sure that you purl your pearls and pass the net without working. Otherwise you will have that stitch loose. Pass the net and purl your purl. Pass the net with a working, there to the front, purl that purl. And like that you're going to continue and this time you're going to finish with the purl stitch before the marker. Now we're going to work in the third round. The third round we're going to work all the stitches, net the net and purl the purl. And then in the fourth we're going to pass the net without working and purl or purls. The same border I did for the hat I'm going to do for the neck or mirror cowl and I will work from one and a half to two inches for the border. You can do it wider, you can do it just one inch, it's up to you. And I'm keeping track of the round because each round is different, so when one round you work all the stitches, the next round you just pass the net without working, so it's good to keep track of that. So now I'm going to net all the stitches and purl all my stitches. So net the net and purl the pearls. So if I had to leave my work, 
it's good to keep track of the run that you're doing because you will know when you come back if you're working in the odd number round or the even number round. The odd number round you are working all your stitches and in the even number rounds you're passing the net without work. So that's very important to keep track of that. Let me get at the end of this third round. Once you finish a round three, you're gonna work round four, and this time we're gonna pass the net without working, and we're gonna purl the pearls. Pass the net without working, and purl your pearls. Turn to the back, pass the net without working as a pearl. You see, with the needle on the front strand, and then purl. Like that, you're going to continue working the combination of those two rounds until you have from one and a half to two inches. Even one inch is up to you the width that you want to give to this uh, border one by one rib. So, after I work in my rib stitch, I will meet you here to start with the stitch for the cowl. Here, I finish my one by one rib. I did 11 rounds in total and I measured 2 inches. So I had to remember that I did 11 rounds because at the end I had to do 9 rounds and then the last two will be exactly the same as the two at the beginning. And that way it's exactly the same. Now I'm going to start with row 1 of the motifs. Remember you have to keep track of those 16 rounds because those are the 16 that you're going to repeat over and over. So it's very easy and fast pattern to do. So what I'm going to do to make things easier for me, I'm going to place another marker after two repetition of the motif. And in this one in here, I will record in Spanish. And then from the other marker, I will record in English. That way I don't have to frog whatever piece I do when I record in Spanish. Okay, So from this marker, it will be in Spanish and the other one in English and it's pretending to be the, the beginning of the round, okay? That's why I want to put a marker, that way you guys know what to do in the repetitions. So I worked these two repetitions in Spanish and from this marker it will be in English. Let's pretend that that's the beginning of the round in here. So you're going to start with 10 net. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Two pearls, two nets and two pearl, and those are your 16 stitches. And that's the repetition that you're gonna do over and over in round one. Then net, 
Two pearls, two net, and two pearl. And that's a repetition that you're going to do over and over on those 16 stitches. Ten net, two pearl, two net, two pearl. Ten net, two pearl, two net, two pearl. <laughs> so I will meet you here at the end of this round for round two. I finished round one and I did my piece on Spanish. So you're gonna start round two. And the ten first stitches is the only one that changed in round two because the other six stay exactly the same. And those are the two repetitions that you're gonna do over and over one and two until round eight. And then what you do in round nine and ten, you'll repeat until round sixteen. So it's very, very easy. It's really the repetition of four round that you do over and over in different stages of the stitch. So you're going to start round two with two net, six purl, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And today is raining, that's why you hear a little drip, 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 drip outside. So after you do the six pearl, you're gonna do two net, and those are the ten stitches. That's the only difference between round one and two. Now you're gonna do two pearls, two net, and two pearl, and those are the sixteen stitches. So really, it's really easy pattern to, to follow, and it looks amazing. So again, you start with two net, the next 16, you start with two net, six pearl, one, two, three, four, five, and six, two net, and those are your ten stitches. And now the other six is two pearl, two net, and two pearl. And like that is the repetition that you're going to do over and over for round two. You're going to start with two net, six pearl, two net, Two pearl, two net, two pearl. I finished and round so two. For round three, it's exactly the same repetition of round one. Ten net, two pearl, two net, two pearl. So like I said, it's very easy pattern to follow. And it it's gorgeous. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten nets, two pearls, two net, and two pearl. And those are your sixteen stitches. Now you start all over again. Ten net, Two net and two pearls. And like that you're gonna continue with those sixteen stitches repetition over and over until you get to the end of round three. Now for round four is the repetition of two. 
So you're gonna start with the net two. You're gonna purl six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. You're gonna net two. Purl two. Net two and purl two, and those are your sixteen stitches. And you start with a repetition again. Net two and purl six. One, two. Four, five, and six. Net two, purl two, net two, and purl two. And that is the repetition that you're going to continue over and over those two round repetition. In round five, you repeat round one. In round six, you repeat round two. In seven, you repeat round one. And in eight, round two. When you finish round eight, I will meet you here to do nine and ten. And the repetition of nine and ten, you will do until round 16. I finished round eight and I started round nine here for Spanish. So what we're doing is we're switching around the position of the motifs. So to begin the round, Remember what you do in round 9 and 10, you will continue those two round repetition until round 16. So you're going to start 9 with 2 net. Two pearls. Two net. And two pearl. That's 8 stitches. Now you're going to net 8. That's the other eight for the sixteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. That is your sixteen. And you start again. Two net. Two pearl, two net, two pearl, now eight net, one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, and eight. And again, you start two net, two pearl, two net, two pearl, eight nets, and so on until you finish round nine. Six pearl, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and and six. Now we're going to repeat that again. Two net, two pearl, two net, two pearl. Two net and six pearls, and that's the repetition that you're gonna do in round ten. So you're gonna do two net, two pearl, two net, two pearl, two net, 
and six burp. Now for 11, you're gonna do the repetition of nine. So this one stay exactly the same. The only ones that change is those six pearl that they will be knit. Two pearl, two knit, two pearl, eight nets. These two plus the other six will be eight. And those are your 16 stitches. Seven and eight, and you start again to knit to pearl to knit to pearl, and now a nets. And like that is the repetition of round 9 that you are doing in round 11. And 8. So that is how you continue. Now in round 12 we're going to do the repetition of 10. So these ones stay exactly the same. You're going to knit 2. Purl 2. Knit two, purl two, knit two, and then you're gonna purl six, and that is the repetition that you're gonna do in this round. Three, four, five. And six, and, and then again, you go back again to the same 16 stitches repetition. You start with two net, two pearls, two net, two pearl, two net and six pearl. Like that you're gonna continue with those two round repetition. So the next one is around 13, you're gonna do the repetition of nine, and 14, repetition of 10, 15, repetition of nine, and 16, repetition of 10. So those are the 16 round repetition that you're gonna do for the stitch. I will do those and I'll show you how the piece. I finished the 16 round of the first motif, I already did two more, <laughs> one and two, and it looked like this, I look amazing, and the design is gorgeous. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to start with the, well I already started with repetition of one and two, and I had to repeat those two round until round eight, and then I will do nine and ten, and those nine and ten I'll repeat until sixteen, and I'll repeat that one more time for a total of three motifs, and I will measure those three motifs plus these two inches plus I will add a measuring tape two more inches for the border and the top to see if that's the length that I want for my cowl or neck warmer. So the length that you're going to give to your cowl neck warmer is up to you. Some people like a longer uh, cowl that they can bunch up around the neck and other like a shorter version that is not too bulky around the neck okay it's up to you the length so if I find that two more plus this one three is not enough I will add one more but I think with three it will be more than long for mine so I will work off camera I will change these to the beginning of round one and I'll continue with the 16 and I'll change it to zero again and 16 that way you can keep track of which round you're working that way they're all even so when I'm done those two more 
repetition of the motif I will meet you here. This is what I did with the leftover yarn from the hat. So with one ball it's not enough to do the set. Either you can make two hats or one hat and with another one the neck warmer. You will need two balls for the set. So, so far I did two rep full repetition of the 16 stitch plus half of the third one. So when I finish the other half, I will add the two inches to see that's the length. If it's not, I will add another full repetition for a total of four repetition of the motif. It's absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous this stitch. I'm, for a sweater in the front, it will look amazing. I'll maybe lay it out the side and do a sweater for Willy with this stitch in the front because it look amazing. I absolutely love it. So I will meet you here after I done with the repetitions of the motif before I start the one by one rib. I finished the third motif and this is the length that I'm gonna give to mine plus the two inches border on the other side. These measure nine and a half inches plus the two inches that I have to do, that will be 11 and a half and that's the size that I like for my neck warmer or cowl around 11 and a half inches, that's the perfect size for me. So now what I'm going to do is do the one by one rib and this side. I'm going to do the repetition of the odd number so you will knit the net and purl the pearls one by one, one net, one pearl, and then in number two I will do what I did in the even numbers at the beginning. That will be, I will pass the net without working and purl the purl. Pass the net without working and purl the purl. In the third round, I will net the net and purl the purl. In the fourth, I will do repetition of two. And so on until I finish round nine. Because 10 and 11 will be the repetition at the beginning of the stitch, uh, the super elastic cast on. You, I'm gonna do the super elastic bind off and I will cast off my stitches and with that's the, the beginning tapestry and this is the end so I've done my nine rounds so in ten you're gonna net the net and pass the pearl without working net the nets pass the pearls without working net the net and pass the pearl without working in the next round, you will pass the net and purl the purl. Pass the net without working and you purl the purl. Once you've done those two rounds, I will meet you here to cast off a bind up with our tapestry needle. I passed the last purl without working. I brought the yarn to the back. Now I'm going to pass this net without working, yarn to the front, purl, yarn to the back, pass the purl, net without working like a purl stitch, yarn to the front, Pearl, yarn to the back, pass the net without working like a pearl stitch you see through the front strand. And like that you're going to do this round and after that we're going to cast our bind up with our tapestry needle. I finished that last stitch and the last round. Now I'm going to leave a tail long enough to cast out or bind up with our tapestry needle. Remember it's better to have extra yarn than not enough because you don't want to have a knot in the top of your work, okay? So, in this case, more is better. Now we're gonna cast off a bind up with our tapestry needle. So you're gonna come here and you pass that net from the back to the front and that front strand, and then that pearl from the front to the back. I know I have a lot of extra tail, but it's in the long run, run is much better that way. So I'm going to pass it here and pass the needle to the back. So now you're going to grab the net and you do this to your net. You have the right leg and the left leg. So you're going to grab the left leg and pass it through and the right leg of the net, those two. And you're going to pull all your yarn through. And don't pull too tight, just like that. Now you're going to do the purl. And if you look at your purl, you have that 
leg and never you're gonna see and if, when you pull it it's the same that pull that strand in between and then you're gonna pass the purl to the back and you pass up that purl now you come to the front, you see, you have the twist strand, usually the left leg is sideways in here, you grab that left leg like that, and that one in here, those two together, and pass it here through. Now you go and grab the pearl, and when you grab the pearl, you see it's that one in here. But you have to grab it from the inside out. And when you pull, you see it's the same strand that the one in the center. And then you pass, like this one is a netting needle, you're going to pass to the back like that, like you're going to knit. Then you pass it through. And you remove that pearl. And now you're going to do the net in the front again. You grab that leg and this one. And like that's how you're going to continue working and cast off or bind off your stitches. And it'll give it a really nice finish to the border as you cow. A more round edge.
Now we'll sew the tag. You can sew it like this, but all this part will have to be the top part of your neck warmer or cowl, otherwise your tag will be upside down. Or you can do it like this. This way, if you put your cowl like that, you read from the top to the bottom handmade, and if you put it like this, from the bottom to the top handmade. So this will be the m most common sense way to sew it. That way you can, if you're just in a rush and you put it on, no matter which way, because the handmade tag don't gonna look upside down, okay? This is the leftover jar. I have 102 grams left. So I use 25.5 grams from this bowl. So remember, I used the leftover jar from my first one to start my cowl or neck warmer. So I have enough here to do a, another hat. You can combine with another color for an accent color and you still can wear as it set with the neck warmer. So it will be great. Even if you do uh, two different colors, no matter, you can do the same stitch, but you can do the border another color or just the border this color and the rest of the have another. It will combine with your neck warmer. So you know you can use the imagination to create different pieces combining different colors so now i'll put the neck warmer in my mannequin well this is the, the end hat. result and look how gorgeous this set look i absolutely love it and i hope you guys like it and give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber and if you make this beautiful set 
and you want to send me some pictures, you can do it through my Facebook page, Ruby Nets Crochet y Tejidos, or my Instagram, Ruby Nets Crochet y Tejido. Please share my videos with friends and family, that way you help me grow here on YouTube. I wish you have a beautiful day.